Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and I'm back again for another soloing school video. Now before I start, if you do enjoy this video, please do hit that subscribe button, give it a like, and drop me a comment below. I read all of those comments, I'm happy to engage with you guys and help you to reach your goals as much as I possibly can. And on that note, this is actually a video that I'm doing to help out one of my patrons over on Patreon.com, The Optimizer. What a great name, right? <laughs> he has been watching my soloing school videos, and is really starting to get to grips with blending major and minor of pentatonics but he is having trouble with really getting to grips with where the thirds are it's all well and good to learn the fingering of an arpeggio but he's struggling to place an interval name on each one of those intervals so uh, I wrote back to him and said you know obviously I'll do a video but the tip is you need to focus on the third first of all the problem is, and this is inevitable when you deal in any, any style of fretboard knowledge, any, any method of learning the neck, it doesn't matter what system you use for this, ultimately you're going to have a collection of patterns that you use to help you navigate the neck, right? So if, we, uh, if we're playing in D, I don't know why I picked D, but D works, and we're playing a D7 arpeggio, you'd have the notes D, F sharp, A, and C. Now you can play those in any way you like. really doesn't matter how you uh, finger those, I could play that in many different ways, but no matter what you do, you have the notes of the arpeggio. The important thing to remember, of course, is that each one of those is an interval. D is the root, F sharp is the third, uh, A is the fifth, and then C is the flat seven. And each one of those sounds a certain way. Now what I really want to help you do is master playing over changes and I found the best way to do that is to get to grips with that third. Now if I look at that position and when I watched Optimizer improvising with this uh, collection of notes he was playing stuff like which feels very much like you're just playing the notes of the arpeggio, going through the motions kind of thing. And we want to add some musicality to things. So what I stress is that when we are playing with an arpeggio there, in any position on the neck of course, I'm focusing on the triad underneath. So instead of this pattern, I'm focusing on these triad groupings. I've done those closed voice triads in lots of my videos before and of course I teach them to all of my students on Skype. Super important, at least for how I'm visualizing things. Now the goal is when I can see those triads that fit around this D um, chord. I want to focus on the third. So of course I already know where the root note is. I need to focus on that third. Now I found the best way to do that, and in a musical way, is we're always going to approach that third from a semitone below. Now that applies to ascending or descending. So I'm gonna play my D, the next note is F sharp, but before playing the F sharp, I'm gonna play a semitone below, so F natural, and then F sharp. I hate putting quick cuts in videos, but I have a terrible cough at the moment and you guys don't want to hear that. So yeah, what I was doing there was I was improvising around those notes, that D, uh, D7 arpeggio. But every time I was gonna play the third, I've learned that it's two places. It's here at the fourth fret on the D string and at the seventh fret on the B string. So I'm always, always, always gonna approach that from a semitone below. Even on the descent, I'm going to ascend to that third. I'm not going to go... That's not the way that this would be used stylistically. We want... So 
So I use that type of vocabulary all the time. And it doesn't matter where I'm improvising, if I was playing D7 around this sort of area, 10th fret area of the neck. where I am I always have that minor to major third thing down. Now that has been an absolute godsend to me because it has trained me where the thirds live. Now once I'm uh, done with this lesson I'm going to film another one on ear training and helping you to connect chords together when improvising but before you're able to do that you really 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 need to know where the third is because I think the third is probably the most um, pleasant, let's go with pleasant, I was going to say important, but pleasant is a better word, it's the most pleasant note to land on when a chord changes. If I play uh, over a simple blues in, in the key of D, which chord 1 would be a D, chord 4 would be a G, chord 5 would be an A, you know, my D is going to sound like this, G. Now, of course, I could go around on that over and over and over. But if you listen back to that, you should be able to hear those chord changes. D. G. To my D. A. To my D. Uh, G. And again, I say I play around on that all day. To me, that's a good way of developing my improvisation. I like to warm up by doing that. I will improvise round and round and round on a 12 bar blues like that and go out of my way to outline those chord changes. Now, it's really about analyzing what I played there. It's really about transcribing what I played there and seeing how I'm using that stuff in my improvisational vocabulary. And another quick cut because my boiler came on. I'm a professional, I promise. So as I was saying, it's all about learning how I'm using that in my improvisational vocabulary. You can't just expect to be given the words of a language and then understand how to speak the language. You can't expect to be given a collection of letters. You can't learn the alphabet and then expect to know all of the words. When I'm improvising, it's about words. So when I play a phrase, You need to be able to play stuff like that without really thinking about it. I hear it, I play it. Uh, I might play three, four. That's a nice strong piece of vocabulary in D. Now it's not planned, like I'm not going, I'll play lick number two or whatever. I'm improvising around what I know, these triad forms. Again, I could go around on this all day, but that's the point. You have to spend time with this, and it's about learning each one of those positions. Now, I, I say positions, it depends on you know how many positions you're working with. Begin with three, I'm a big fan of this. 
that kind of A shape, E shape, you need that, and C shape. And if you can play those thirds in each one of those, here's my uh, E shape. And then I'm back down in my C shape. You start to be able to connect them like that. playing with my palm bender there <laughs> before any of you are too confused. So that's the important thing to focus on, where that third is. You need to learn where that third is. That's super important. Can't stress that. Put the time into that and you will get results. So there we go, guys. I hope you did enjoy that soloing school lesson. It's going to be very, very useful to you in the long run in your playing life. So focus on it. Let me know how you get on in that comment section below. And uh, yeah, like I say, I'm always happy to engage with you guys. Lastly, I want to uh, send out a, an extra debt of gratitude to these people over here. These are some of my support supporters over on patreon.com they keep these videos coming to you so thank you so much for these uh for your support guys optimizer your name is up there uh yeah you get lots of cool stuff supporting me on patreon for as little as one dollar gets you access to my private patron only facebook group so that's a good use of your time as well and uh that makes my videos better i've just bought new lights they're not here just yet but i'll have new lights soon and my videos should start to look even better soon so yeah thank you very much guys i really do appreciate it uh, if you would like to check me out on patreon you can do so by clicking this button up here you can subscribe by clicking this little button down here and you will find two more of my videos here and here. Much love guys, thanks so much for all of the support, it really does mean a lot and I love making these videos for you so I'm going to keep doing it if that's okay with you. <laughs> so until next time, go get practicing. Laters.